Hey everybody, do you have an L4 or L5 disc bulge or disc herniation that's not getting any better despite you tried exercise and common treatments? I'm gonna, today's tip is I'm going to give you five ways to determine is spinal decompression right for you. And I'm going to show you five different tests on how to do that. I'm Dr. Gregory Kramer, Certified Corrective Chiropractor from Chiropractic Biophysics. I've been practicing in Livonia, Michigan for over the last 30 years. In the last 30 years, I've been helping people get out of pain, stabilize their spine so they can live stronger longer. My overriding theme with all of these disc videos is this. Number one, I'm going to show you self-care. It doesn't cost you a penny, you just got to do it. Number two, we're going to look at the structural alignment of your spine with x-rays. We look at movement and alignment. And number three, we're going to look at the healing of the disc. We're going to actually talk about what can we do to create an environment for the disc to heal. Sometimes we have to uh, do spinal decompression before structural rehabilitation. Sometimes we reverse it. So today we're going to show you the five tests that you can know is spinal decompression right for you. Now, let's get to our video. Number one. Do you have a positive MRI? In other words, have you had an MRI that showed either a bulging disc or degenerative disc or a herniated disc or an extruding disc or a protruding disc? If you hear any one of those, you're a candidate for spinal decompression. Number two, do you have back pain? Do you have pain radiating down your legs? Do you have weakness in your legs? Is your foot dropping? Do you have pain radiating down your arms where your arms are getting weak? That is a sign that you would benefit from spinal decompression and you should get checked ASAP. Number three, do you have pain when you go from sitting to standing? You know where you, it takes you a while to get off the chair, but once you start moving, you feel better. So if you have pain going from sitting to standing, chances are you have a disc problem that would benefit from spinal decompression. Number four, do you have pain in the first one third of the motion? That means as soon as you start to lean back, it's painful. As soon as you start to bend forward, that first one third range of motion it hurts. It's the same thing with bending right or bending left. It's not pain at the end of the range of motion, but pain at the first one third. All of those are signs that you have a great chance of benefiting greatly from spinal decompression. Now, what does spinal decompression do? Very simple. What it does is it decompresses the disc. So, we've shown this picture before. This is the, di the spine, disc, spine. This is the nerve root. Nerves carry energy. This is the, the spinal cord that connects the brain to the body. So the red line is a disc tear, all right? And then when that disc tear gets deep enough and you flex forward, that's a herniation or bulging disc irritating the nerve. When we decompress the spine, it sucks that herniation back in. Watch it again. When we stress the spine, that herniation comes out, puts pressure on a nerve, creating pain and inflammation. When we decompress the pine, you see how the disc gets sucked back in? One more time. Look at right at the red line. That is the tear on the annular fiber. The herniation irritates the nerve root, causing back, butt, or back, butt, and leg pain. As we decompress, you can see the disc bulge coming in. Now, once we suck that material in, it gives the annular fibers a chance to heal. That is the benefit of spinal decompression. So, and the fifth test, now remember, we talked about positive MRI, you have pain or weakness in arms or legs, you have pain going from sitting to standing, you have pain in the first one third of the motion, but the simplest test is have one of your friends or, or family members gently pull on your legs, and if this feels good, you are decompressing your spine. If that feels good, then you would be a, a candidate for spinal decompression, which is doing repetition, pull and relaxing over 10 to 20 minutes. So if this feels good, you're a candidate, but if this hurts you, then you're probably not a candidate for spinal decompression, it's that simple. So what does decompression look like? Well, your table should accommodate all types and shapes of bodies. You remember our previous video, some people feel better in extension, some people feel better flexing forward. 
So we need a table that's not one size fits all. So whoever you see, make sure they have a spinal decompression table that can accommodate the most comfortable position. Again, one size fits all is rarely the answer. So this position where you lie uh, face up or supine, usually for elderly people over the age of 50 that have a disc bulge or herniation and some arthritis. This is a position where someone's lying face down and they're a little bit in extension. Now remember, most of these disc bulges or disc herniations are in the back of the spine. So when we lie face down, we're letting gravity help centralize that disc material. And usually someone that's younger where extension feels good, this position can get them out of pain faster. And that's what we all want. We all want fast and long-term pain relief. Fast and long-term. So the table can accommodate you. Now, there's other positions. Some people uh, do better face down, but their legs are a little bit lower. So that might be someone that has a posterior herniation. However, because they got some arthritis, someone like me, um, and they're over the age of 50, might benefit from that. This is someone who just does perfect face down, not with any flexion, so we don't need to lower the legs, or not with any extension where we need to raise the table. Now, some people have such horrible pain on one side of their body, that they need to be on their side. Well, this specific table, this is a Kennedy decompression table, can accommodate everybody. So when you're looking for someone with spinal decompression, I would look for a Kennedy decompression table because it is a versatile table. It's a great table and it can accommodate all sizes, all shapes, but also all positional relief factors. In other words, what position is comfortable for you. and even though this is an L4, L5 disc presentation, this is what it looks like for neck decompression. So if you have a herniated disc in your neck and you got pain going down your arms, you would be a great candidate for spinal decompression for the neck. This is a Kennedy decompression table. This is for an elderly patient, usually over 50. Patient lying face up or supine. You see a red irritated nerve, red irritated disc. And as we decompress that disc, we're taking pressure off the nerve. That's why the nerve goes to green. You see those red and white speckles. That indicates blood and oxygen is going into the disc. That pumping mechanism is creating a healing environment in the disc. So again, spinal decompression is, is like a, almost like you're wringing out a sponge. You are pumping the disc. Uh, pumping fluids in and out, bringing oxygen to a disc, and as we create that negative pressure, the disc starts to retract the bulging or herniated material, and that's what allows those fibers to heal. Those annular fibers, though, that red mark on the disc that I showed you. Now, this table is for someone that's face down, and you can see the table starting to distract and decompress the spine. And the decompression is now getting pressure off of the disc. This is the disc. And now you've seen the nerve that was irritated orange red is turning green. That's green is a sign of healing. You see these, these colors, these, these are signs of oxygen and blood getting into the disc. That's the whole purpose of decompression. We are pushing fluids in and out of the disc, creating a healing environment. So again, spinal decompression decompresses the disc, creating a negative disc pressure. That negative disc pressure sucks in the bulging or herniated disc. It also reduces pressure because it transfers fluid. A lot of pain is from pressure of the inflammatory exudates or the inflammatory fluids. And so we are like literally like a sponge. We're wringing it in and wringing it out. And let me tell you, decompression feels good. Most of you will fall asleep during decompression because you've been in pain for so long. Personally, it's that's what makes me fall asleep. To review, conditions that benefit from cervical and lumbar decompression. Number one, herniated disc, sciatica or pain going down your leg, spinal arthritis, failed surgery. Yes, failed surgery often benefits from spinal decompression. Bulging disc, degenerative disc, spinal stenosis, facet syndrome, radiculopathy, those are the main problems that benefit from spinal decompression. And again, how does decompression work? 
Decompression therapy relieves pain, reduces inflammation of the spine. It restores spinal motion while treating the underlying cause. And I'll get back to that. Spinal disc decompression creates negative pressure inside the herniated bulging disc, letting it retract naturally, thus relieving disc pressure on spinal nerves, which relieves pain. Reducing pressure in the disc also restores the natural transfer of surrounding fluids, nutrients, and oxygen into the disc, which is a, a process essential for disc health. Tears in the disc while now can repair themselves while nutrients introduced back into the disc nucleus, the nucleus is the center part of the disc, can reverse the disc degeneration and its collapse and restore disc height, which relieves pressure on inflamed spinal joints. Again, we need to treat the disc. Exercise does not treat the disc, it protects the disc. That's very important. We've talked about a lot of exercise, but we need to treat the disc. Drugs, laser, all reduce inflammation, but it doesn't treat the disc. We need to create a healing environment for the disc. And so spinal decompression does that, has a great success rate. There's science to back it up and it's comfortable, and many of you would benefit greatly from spinal decompression. Exercise do not rehabilitate the disc, they protect the disc. Spinal decompression is the only thing that creates an environment for the disc itself. Structural alignment also affects the loading on the disc. And it depends, some people we do spinal decompression first to get the disc to heal, and then we add structural rehabilitation, improving movement and alignment to not irritate the disc. If you like this video, if you have questions, please comment, please like, please subscribe. And again, if you want more information, particularly with exercises so you can help yourself, just go ahead and watch this video here. This is an awesome video that I think would help you tremendously and we'll cover more information on the next video.